All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the only appointment setting video you will ever need to watch. I was pondering over the direction that I want to take my content in and trying to decide what I really wanted to make. And I decided I wanted to put out such comprehensive, valuable pieces of trainings and information so that you guys only ever need to watch them once for you to actually start making money and get to where you need to be. So strap in because I'm about to teach you everything you need to know about appointment setting from how to find a client, from how to actually set appointments to how to close the client and how to perform well and actually run up a bag with appointment setting. So if you want to make a lot of money and you want to be able to make it completely remote, I highly recommend you put your phone in another room and you peep game and really lock into this because this is the only video that you're going to need in order to completely change your life for good. So to start off, I want to compare appointment setting to some of the other popular business models out there and things that you potentially have already tried before. And through this, I'm going to kind of explain to you why nothing else you've tried has worked yet and why appointment setting or sales will. I'll start with what I actually tried first and what I actually failed with and what led me to getting into sales. Now, it's one of the most talked about and popularized business models that there is in today's environment, and that is SMMA. So before I actually got into sales, I was sold on starting a social media marketing agency. I paid for a domain, set up some business pages, and I was about to start doing outreach. As I did this, I began to realize that social media marketing is running ads for companies. So in order to have a successful SMMA, you need to have a few things. You need to know how to run ads. You need to know how to find clients and close those clients on your service. You need to know how to fulfill the order you need to know how to hire and fire employees you need to know how to make content you need to know copywriting and you need to know how to sell and analytics and all these other things as well so basically you need a bunch of different business skills in order to succeed in this business model it was at this point that i took a step back and i went damn i don't have any skills at all i have none of the above so where do i go now i had my plan to financial freedom and now i'm basically high and dry with no plan and no idea what to do next but I looked at it objectively and I began to understand that in order to be successful, you need these skill sets. So this is when I started to learn about skills. I learned that all those skills that I just listed and all the skills that you need to succeed in SMMA in any business have a name. They're called high income skills. All high income skills are, are just skills that are highly valued in the market. And they only take about two to three months to learn on average. And they allow you to make as much as a doctor or a lawyer without any previous experience, without any qualifications. So anyone can do this. When I figured this out, I was like, this is a cheat code. Like, why are more people not doing this? You don't have to go to uni. You don't need to study. You just find somewhere to learn. It takes about one to two months and you can start making money more than a doctor or lawyer. It's a no brainer. I found a cheat code, literally. And I can confidently say it is a cheat code. If your goal is to just make money and achieve freedom, university or studying is not the answer. The traditional route will betray you. And I've seen it betray thousands of people developing skill sets as an individual and becoming valuable and using your skill sets to provide value to the marketplace then combined with leverage is the true path to freedom so understanding this i knew that i had to start to develop skill sets this is when i took another deep look into the actual business models that everyone seemed to be doing and I realized dropshipping is selling a product, SaaS is selling software, SMMA is selling a service, FBA is selling physical or digital products. Then I was like, wait a minute, every single business is selling something. And when I realized this, it made a lot of sense to decide to develop the skill of sales. So I began to learn how to sell. I made my first $100,000 with sales and now it allows me to this day to make no less than two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars a year every year i'm making as much as a doctor or a lawyer if not more without a business without a degree i have no fulfillment no headache no issues whatsoever no stress and on top of that is literally one of the most in-demand skills that there is people always need things sold in order to make money sales literally makes the world go round and you can literally do it from anywhere in the world. Now, some of you might be thinking, this motherfucker is really saying sales is the greatest thing ever, and you're thinking about car sales or cold calling or something like that. But this is not the type of sales that we are talking about. The type of sales that we're talking about is a sales that genuinely helps and improves people's lives and allows us to make thousands and thousands of dollars from our phone or laptop from anywhere in the world. So what type of sales are we actually talking about here? We're going through a massive shift right now where people are starting to wake up to the fact that going to uni to go into thousands and thousands of dollars of debt to work a job that you don't want to work for the rest of your life 
isn't the best option. And what this has led to is a bunch of 20 year olds like myself taking advantage of what Forbes is calling the fastest growing $350 billion industry that continues to grow to this day. And that is the e-learning or online education industry. Now school isn't going to teach you this because what online education actually is, is a alternative to school. And it's basically a way more practical, useful, version of school where you're learning real life things from real life millionaires who actually own businesses instead of some business professor that doesn't own a business. Examples of people with online education companies are people like Eamon Gadzi, Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, Tony Robbins, Andrew Tate, Luke Belmont, Gregor Gallagher. All these people sell expensive offers online and the education they sell can range from anywhere between $500 to $50,000. And because they are selling expensive things, they need to employ people that are capable of selling those things. Meaning they are constantly employing hundreds of appointment setters and closers. There are two roles in these companies, a setter and a closer. A closer takes and closes calls, and a setter books in those calls. In this training, we're gonna focus on the setting side of things because that's normally the first thing any closer does anyway. It's what I started with, and it's what all the best closers start with. Now, I've seen setters make $2,000, $3,000, and even $10,000 a month. This is because if we just look at this objectively, if I'm a business owner and I do not have any sales calls booked, can I make money? No. Meaning if an appointment setter isn't working for me, then I'm not making money. I'm actually losing millions. So as a business owner, I'm more than happy to have a bunch of appointment setters and pay them a commission. And this is called you eat what you kill. As a salesperson, you get paid what you're worth. You don't get paid more, you don't get paid less. You get paid a commission on your performance. These business owners really need good appointment setters. So if you understand positioning, then you understand that to make a lot of money, you need to position yourself as an appointment setter in these businesses. As an appointment setter, you're not only putting yourself in a position to work for probably a lot of these people that you're watching online and network with them, people making over a million dollars a month. When I first started, I was an appointment setter for some of the biggest Instagram, biggest YouTube, biggest finance guys. And my first role as a closer was for one of the biggest e-commerce guys who was a 22 year old multimillionaire and I actually got to meet him in Melbourne. And he was almost doing a milli a month. So you see not only the money that this can make you, but the doors that it can open. You might end up working for one of your favorite influencers. So this is what the entire sales process looks like. There is organic traffic, there's paid ads, there's emails or websites. That traffics people to your DMs where they meet a setter. The setter will then go through a conversation and book in the call with a closer. And then the closer will go ahead and make that close. Now the closer makes money, then the closer will go ahead and close that deal and make money. The closer makes a bit, the closer makes a percentage, you make a percentage and the business keeps a percentage. Meaning as an appointment setter, the business owner pays you a commission just to have a short conversation with someone and book them on a sales call. Now, these aren't just random people. These are people that already know, like, and trust the business owner, which makes it a lot easier for you as an appointment setter because this person already wants to get on a call. Now, why appointment setting is a starting point for most closers and why it was for myself is because you're not actually closing any calls. You're not closing any deals. You're not selling, meaning you do not need to be a killer salesperson to do this role. Your only job is to have a short conversation and book in qualified leads. That's it. So like I said, as most sales roles are, this is a commission-based role, meaning you eat what you kill. And this is what allows you to make so much money. So I wanna give you guys a breakdown of how the commission will work and how much money you can make. So you take your commission percentage, which is normally around 5%, then you take the price of what you're selling, say something for $6,000, 5% would be $300. And then you times that by the amount of closes that actually go through. So let's say you speak to 100 people a day, book in five of them, and out of those five, one closes. Then you will make $300 a day, which is $9,000 a month, which is almost 10K a month. So just with appointment setting, you might even hit your first $10,000 a month. You can make $10,000 a month without a degree, without any experience, working completely remote, without even selling anything, without starting a business. All you need is a phone or a laptop and half a brain and maybe a little bit of hunger. Now that you understand the fundamentals, let's get into the course. There are going to be four modules in this process. Finding a client, outreach, closing the client, then performing as a setter and actually doing the role. Module one, finding a client. So as you may know, the first step in becoming an appointment setter is actually finding someone to work for, finding someone to do appointment setting for. Now, as an appointment setter, you wanna find someone who has a lot of lead flow and who has a lot of appointments there for you to book in so that you 
can make a lot of money. So we don't just need any client, but we need a good client that has good lead flow, good offer and good volume. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is that most of landing a role is going to be social media. Social media is based on perception. Your social media is normally how everyone that doesn't know you personally will perceive you. This is the same for business, especially online business. Your social media presence basically becomes your resume. So before we go into finding clients, let's make sure that you're in the best position before we even think about that. We wanna make sure your profile looks clean, good, and professional. If you've got a bad Instagram, they're simply gonna open your DM, swipe right, and press delete. I'm guilty of this. If your Instagram is not in good shape, don't even think about coming. If you're gonna come, come correct. Have a clean, good Instagram profile before you do anything. If you have a good Instagram and it looks clean, the profile picture's clean, the pictures are clean, maybe you're verified, you're probably gonna get a response because you're going to stand out in a sea of people that are reaching out. A good Instagram profile has a good clean headshot as a profile picture. It doesn't have to be super professional, but it just has to look clean. Then your feed should contain some photos of you working, maybe in your apartment working as on a laptop. There may be some photos of you and your lifestyle, whether that be traveling, having fun, but try to stay away from drugs, drinking. I mean, don't try to stay away from if you have drugs drinking degeneracy look like a loser you're not going to get any responses so just don't do that if you want a good example just look at my account or other people who are really big in the online space you'll notice they have a lot of followers their profiles clean they're verified and you just tell that their profile commands a level of respect the reason that we do this is because when you are doing outreach people are simply going to see your message click on your profile and then decide if they want to reply or not if they get a shitty instagram like i said they're going to delete your message and never think about you again. If I personally reached out to someone and asked to be a closer with the amount of content I have, with the following I have, with the feed I have, I'm probably going to get the job. Now, don't go overboard and start plastering high ticket closer, remote closer all over your profile because real professionals don't even do that. If you want to do anything, simply just put sales or business in your bio and leave it at that. Now, once you've got your Instagram, it looks clean, it looks professional, you would actually respond to the message if you were a business owner, then it is time to figure out who we're even going to reach out to. But before we get into that, I want you guys to know about this huge free course I just made. Every single thing you need to know about getting into high ticket sales. I really recommend you watch this video. It's probably the most valuable video I've made. I go super in depth into the mindset, into how to start, how to hit your first six figures. That will be the one and only link in the description. Now back to how we find people and actually do the outreach. Firstly, how do we vet clients? How do we know that they're actually a good fit? How do we know who is good, who is reputable, and who's a scammer? Let's look at Gregor Gallagher. He's a big fitness influencer, has a high ticket offer in the fitness niche. He has a very big personal brand, lots of content, lots of credibility. He would be an example of someone that has a good, strong offer and would be a good client. Who we don't want to work for is the guy who's standing out front of a Lambo, money spreading on TikTok, flashing some fake Rolex, and trying to push people towards a telegram or some sort of trading course because that is a scammer and that is not who you want to work for their instagram is looking really clean they have a lot of content showing who they are showing their credibility lots of followers lots of interactions and a good bio in their bio they're going to have something like a free workshop or a free training or somewhere to book in a call if they have a call to action in their dm as well it's also a good sign because it means they already have closers and setters on their team and there's already people in that business making the money that you want to be making now how you can go ahead and start finding these people is what i would recommend is just actually consuming content so instagram and youtube finding people within whatever niche it is so say you wanted to do a fitness offer you would start watching youtubers about fitness seeing if they have coaching going on instagram and searching fitness coaching and finding a lot of different coaches that way if you wanted to do it in e-commerce e-commerce coach drop shipping coach drop shipping course on youtube searching different content and kind of establishing who's got high ticket offers then you can go ahead and start reaching out to them even just by going into instagram and searching the niche and then coach after you're going to get hundreds and hundreds of different options module two outreach so now that you've got a bunch of different clients that you can potentially work for and you're ready to start doing outreach i'm going to show you how to do outreach that is actually going to get a response and eventually get you hired and the best way to do that is for me to just give you the exact script so make sure you save and like this video because i'm going to give you the exact script to use now remember a good outreach message makes a client actually want to reply and talk to you you can't go message Eamon Gadzi or Ty Lopez and say, hey, can I please work for you as an appointment set up, please? They're not going to reply. And even I say this and I still get messages on the daily. Hey, do you need an appointment set up? Hey, can I be an appointment set up for you? 
Shush. No, you can't. That is not what you want to do. You want to be able to stand out amongst a sea of people asking for a job. How do you do that? One, like I said, have a good profile. But then when it comes to outreach, you want to personalize the message as much as possible. This can be done if you've got a mutual friend or you know the same person or you're following the same person. But the chances of that, if you're a nobody, are quite low. So if you don't have anything in common, you don't have any similar friends, then what you can do is outreach like this. Hey, John, I've been watching your stuff for a long time. I love how you do things. Not sure if your current sales team is doing this, but I've seen that by providing a short five minute pre-call video at least 24 hours before the call will show will increase your show up rate and increase the quality of the call. This is a strategy I use with my sales process. By highlighting a problem their current sales team could be facing, you're providing useful information to that business without even getting anything in return, which is going to help you stand out in a sea of people providing no value. Everyone else is just messaging them, asking them if they're hiring or if they need an appointment setter. Now, understand outreach is a numbers game. Don't just send out 10 DMs, never follow up, and then cry because you didn't get a message back and then quit. Send hundreds of DMs every day. I would suggest following up with a message like, hey, just following up with you, I want to keep in touch as that's the type of salesperson I am. This is the hardest part of the entire sales process. Just landing the first client, but once you've done that, everything else is downhill and you'll be able to make six figures a year for the rest of your life. So make sure you go hard, make sure you do lots of outreach, make sure you don't get discouraged because once you land that role, it's a wrap. And then once a client decides that you could be a potential good fit, for their business, then you need to go ahead and have an interview and actually close that client. And you should be able to sell yourself to that client on why they should hire you if you're gonna be a salesperson. Module three, closing the client. Now, when it comes to the interview, all right, you're on a call, you're about to try to get a job from this person. Don't be needy, be confident, don't be flustered, don't start tweaking, don't start fiddling with shit. Have a good background, be presentable. Then basically just let them ask you questions, let them interview you. They're gonna start asking things about your experience and things like that. Then once they've asked you a couple questions and you've just been authentic and been truthful, then you need to start asking them questions. Questions like, what are the on-target earnings of your current closers? Using industry terminology is a green flag to them because it shows you have experience and knowledge of the space. And then you can even ask things like, how can I be a good culture fit for you? What sort of culture does your team have? How long have you been in business? Where do you plan on actually taking this business in the next couple of years? To kind of show that you want to grow with this company, you're interested in the company and you like the company and you want to bring as much value as you possibly can. Ask the business owner to role play even to showcase your skill. Practice prior so you're prepared. If you do the same thing as me and join a training group where you actually get to get role plays, you can even provide some role plays that you've done within the training group. Do not come off like you're in desperate need of a job or you're some hungry salesperson. Just come off as a professional that wants to genuinely provide as much value as possible to their business. Be authentic. Best of luck in this phase. I have a lot of belief that you'll be able to crush this. Just be yourself, be confident and say what I told you to say. Now, module four, performing as a setter. Probably the most important part because you can obviously do all the other things, but if you're a shit setter, then no one wants to have you on their team. So how do you actually kill the appointment setting role so that you're a good setter, you make a lot of money and everyone's happy? Now that you've found a client, you've closed the client, how do you actually do the thing? How do you set appointments? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you real conversations from $6,000 closers that actually went through so that you can learn how these conversations normally go. Now the setters who set these calls, keep in mind, made $300 per conversation. So if we look at some of these, how can I start? How long have you been looking into sales for? For a while now, interested in starting a business and doing my own thing, making money for myself. How's your current business going? This is where you're kind of qualifying them and seeing where they're currently at, how everything's currently going for them to qualify if they're gonna have enough money for the program. Started a week ago and then I asked him, why does he wanna transition into sales? Simply because hardworking, this is where I'm getting his desired situation and his current situation. Okay, so definitely backbreaking work and not very freeing. How long have you wanted to go online? Making sure that he actually has an understanding of what he wants to get into. Another one, do you have any experience in sales? I've got no experience. Do you want a rundown? Gave him a rundown, that sounds good. How could I get my foot in the door? Are you lost? Do you know how to start? A bit of both. Sent him a video. Even if you're shy, you can still talk to people and so on. Here are some other setting conversations that you can look over. Just pause the video, have a read through these, take them in and understand how the conversation works. So basically the most complicated the setting conversation is ever gonna get is 
prospect, hey man, I want to get into sales. Lovely brother, how long have you been looking into it? Couple months now. Nice man, and what are you currently doing for work? I uh, work a retail job. Nice man, and what inspired the change? I just hate my job, hate working for someone else, and I want more freedom. I hear you, man, that's the same position I was in. How much do you need to be making to kind of replace your current income? About 5k a month. Bet, bro, that's definitely achievable. Let's make it 10k a month. Sounds like you're going to be a really good fit. If you want, I can pull some strings and get you on a call with a member from my team to build a plan to fully transition you into sales. Prospect, and then he would say, that'd be awesome, man, let's do it. And then you would go ahead and book him on the call, and that's basically as complicated as any setting conversation is going to get. See how different this is to a traditional sales job. You know, we're not trying to sell someone a used car. We're not cold calling. We're not knocking doors. We're simply seeing someone's situation, seeing if we can help them. And if they are, then we're helping them. This isn't salesy at all. It's literally just helping someone make the best decision for themselves. Setting is literally this easy. All you're doing is having a short conversation, finding someone's needs, and then helping them take steps in the right direction. Qualify lead, book call, done. That's it. So obviously your first job in the setting process is to qualify the prospect and make sure they're actually able to work with you and they're a good potential fit. Your whole job as a setter is to book in calls. But if you're just booking in a bunch of random unqualified leads from India and Africa and they have no money, then you're not only wasting your time, but you're wasting the closer's time and the business's time. And nobody's going to make any money and especially not you. Now, you don't want to qualify prospects by saying, how much money is in your bank account? Tell me now. Because you're not only going to scare them off, but you're just going to ruin the whole process. A far less threatening way of qualifying a prospect is just by asking, how much would you need to be making with X to replace your current income? That's why they're going to say, he's just trying to figure out what I need to quit my job, but they're going to tell you that they're making four or $5,000 a month. Then you're going to be able to tell they have enough income there to afford the program. You don't want to just set a bunch of appointments, but you want to set quality appointments because quality appointments is what's going to get you paid. Once you've qualified them, then you want to dig into their current and then their desired situation. And you want to bridge a gap between the two and that bridge being your solution. What are they currently doing? Why do they want to leave that? And why do they want to leave that to do X business model? Two more things are just foreshadowing, which is basically selling them and getting them excited for the call because that's going to increase the show up rate and it's going to make them have a better call. You want to kind of say things like, you're going to be speaking with my main man, Mark, who's an absolute killer. He'll make sure to look after you. I told him to make sure that you guys have a productive call. Then you also want to make sure you have a strong pre-call, not something I see a whole lot of people talk about online, but having a strong pre-call sequence is going to help you with no-shows and it's going to help you have a way better call. So this can be done by sending over some homework, some pre-call content, which is what I personally do. Send them over 30, 40 minute video that prepares them for the call and actually gets them more excited and more invested in the call. Then you can also pre-call by saying, hey man, just making sure that you're good for this time on this date with whoever the closer is and check in with them before the call, making sure that they are actually attending. They'll either tell you that something's come up and they need to reschedule or they'll tell you that they're good to go and they will show up. So to summarize, you want to qualify, then you want to set properly, then you want to establish the gap between the current situation and the desired situation. Then you want to do your pre-call nurturing, then you can hand it off to the closer. So understand guys that all you need to be making thousands of dollars a month is to set two to three calls a day. As an appointment setter, you set your own schedule and your own shifts. But your day as an appointment setter will look like you get up, you do your morning routine, you start messaging prospects and scheduling appointments, you maybe do that for five hours, then you organize your leads, you send your end of day report, and then you do whatever you want for the rest of the day. Now, you're constantly on your phone DMing people anyway, you may as well be getting paid from it. Now, you can do this while working a job, you can do this while studying, and you can just fit it into your schedule. I know when I was doing this, I was still working in construction. Or if you want, you can do this full-time, work all day, and just go super hard and, and grind it out. This is because it's a commission-based role. It's not an hourly salary. You do it where you want. As long as you're bringing in money for the business, you can do this. If you feel like this all sounds too easy and too good to be true, there's no way you can make thousands of dollars just by sending DMs. I already broke it down to you how possible it is to make $200, $300 a day. If you do that every day, you'll be making more than six figures a year. This is by far the easiest, simplest way to start making money online as a beginner. And like I said, the hardest part is just finding that first client. But once you find that first client, it's all downhill from there. Appointment setting is the very first step I took in completely transitioning out of a construction job being completely broke into moving into sales and making a lot of money online and now I can go wherever I want I can do what I want I have the freedom to literally go where I want buy what I want and live how I want to live and I was able to stack hundreds and thousands of dollars in just one year. So if I can do that in one year, if I give you the guidance and I tell you what to do to avoid all the mistakes I made, you can probably do it even quicker. Now, I've basically given you everything you need to go ahead and get started with appointment setting in this video for free. 
But if I'm going to be completely honest, when I started, I didn't start by watching YouTube videos like this. I understood that I wanted success as quickly and as effectively as possible. Have people done this on their own? Absolutely. And if you think that's the best fit for you, then please use this video and go ahead and try to do this on your own. Just be aware, if you do try to do this on your own, that two things may happen. One, the likelihood of you getting stuck and just giving up and quitting completely multiplies. Two, the likelihood of you taking a lot longer also multiplies. When you have nobody guiding you, and you're trying to figure out everything on your own, sometimes you can get six, seven months in, achieve nothing and just give up. Or you can take a year or two and finally get some success. But if you had the right people that walked the path before teaching you how to do it, you could have done it in two months or a month like I did. Now, I credit the main reason I was able to see so much success in such a short time frame to having the right people around me. So ask yourself, do you have time to waste or do you need to act fast? I want you guys to have the same opportunity I did. So if you want the opportunity to learn from the team that I learned all of this from, there will be a link below to book in a call with them. Please like this video so you can save it for all the information in it. Please turn on notifications so you don't miss any more opportunities that I'm sharing with you guys. Happy New Year. Let's run it up this year. It's pretty much the last year we've got and I'll see you guys in the next one.